Hey, welcome to this channel. With this video, we begin a new series which is IGCSE Economics. So we'll be covering the topics that are there in the syllabus as given by the board. So subscribe to this channel. Make sure you press the bell icon so that you get notified whenever new content is uploaded. If you have not yet checked out the playlist on IGCSE Accounting, you can do so. The link will be given in the description box of this video. So let's begin with our first chapter, which is on economic problem. Let's understand the economic problem. Now, before understanding the economic problem, let us understand what's an economy. An economy is a marketplace where you will find producers who produce goods and services and consumers who want to consume goods and services. Okay. So apart from producers and consumers, you will have other entities who are also involved in the production and distribution of goods and services. Like you will have workers who are involved in the production. You will have government entities who are regulating the production activity and so on. So let's understand the basic economic problem. The basic economic problem is there because of two main reasons. First is the limited resources and second is the unlimited wants. Now, let's divide our entire basic economic problem into four parts. The first part speaks about scarcity of resources. What are resources? Resources are factors of production that are used in the production of goods and services. Okay, goods and services. In order to produce goods and services, you need certain resources. These resources, also known as factors of production, are scarce in an economy, are always limited in nature. You don't have unlimited resources. The factors of production are classified into four subcategories for the purpose of understanding economics, for the purpose of studying economics. First category is land. Now land will include all your natural resources available around you in, on earth. Okay, Students have the misconception that land includes only bare, bare land physical land but that's not true land will include anything that is available naturally to us for example obviously physical land water air minerals oil plants etc anything you see around you naturally that comes under land the second category of factors of production is the labor now labor will include all your physical and mental human effort that is required to produce goods and services okay now physical Effort, obviously the one put, put in by the workers in the factory. Mental human effort, meaning what? The manager, the planning done by the managers at the factory or at the office. Hence, all human effort put in the production of goods and services will fall under labor. The third category of factors of production is the capital. Now, capital includes all your man-made products or man-made goods that can be further used to produce other goods and services. Okay, for example, machinery. Man has made machinery and that machinery can be used to produce other goods and services. So machinery falls under capital. Okay, again, students have a misconception. They relate capital to the money involved in the business. For, from, from the economics point of view, that's not true. Capital will include all your physical or man-made goods and services, man-made products that can be used to produce other goods and services. And finally, the fourth category is the enterprise. Now, enterprise involves organizing other factors of production, which is the land, labor, capital and taking business risk to produce goods and services. Now, why do, I, why do I say organize factors of production? Because these factors of production have to be used in a certain mix. You might want to use more of land, more of labor and less of capital or more of labor and less of land and capital. Or one might just want to use enti produce entirely using capital without any labor. That decision about the mix of factors of production is to be taken by the entrepreneur, which is the enterprise. And there's also a business risk involved. What if the goods that you produce or the enterprise entrepreneur produces may not be sold. So that business risk is always there and that is entirely taken by the entrepreneur, which falls under enterprise. So four categories of factors of production. Now these factors of production are scarce or limited in nature. You don't have unlimited quantities of these factors of production. That's the first part of our basic economic problem. Let's go on to the second part of our basic economic problem. The second part of basic economic problem is the unlimited human wants for goods and services. Now, human want, humans want to consume goods and services. They want to keep on consuming goods and services. Now, whatever goods and services humans want to consume, I would divide that into need, 
or wants. Now, need is a good or service that is required for your basic survival, basic living. Now, for example, food, clothing, shelter. Want is a good or service that not required for basic survival, not required for your living, but still humans want to consume to have a better quality of life, to enjoy their life, to enjoy these goods and services. Okay. Now, the problem is human want, wants are always unlimited. Okay. They, they don't stop. The humans don't stop consuming goods and services. Giving you a very simple example. Today, you might have a want of owning a car and a house. Tomorrow, when you are able to own or buy that house and a car, you might want to have a bigger house, a better car. You might want to have better, you want to buy better branded material. You want to buy more of luxury goods. So human wants are never ending. Okay. We keep on demanding for more goods and services. Now, the third part of the economic problem is factors of production have alternate uses, meaning there's not a limited type of goods and services that you can produce using these factors of production. You can use these factors of production to produce so many types of goods and services. Okay. So these factors of production have multiple uses. They can be used individually or in combination in a proper mix with each other to produce other goods and services. And the final problem of the basic, the final part of the basic economic problem is the choice of resource allocation. I told you resources are limited. Wants are unlimited. So obviously we cannot produce every, all, uh, everything that we want. All goods and services required by humans cannot be produced. So now a decision has to be taken. What goods to produce using what resources? So the, the, there's a choice of resource allocation to be made. So that choice of resource allocation involves three types of economic questions that has to be an answered. Now, first one is what to produce. What type of goods and services are we willing to produce given our limited resources? Obviously, when we choose to produce certain goods and services, we are letting off go certain goods and services. We are not producing certain goods and services. The second question is how to produce. As a producer, you might want to use only labor. You might want to use only capital, only machines, or you might want to use a mix of labor and capital. You might want to use little of natural resources available around you. So how to produce is the second question. And finally, for whom to produce as a producer, you may have an option of catering to so many different kinds of people. One, a producer might want to cater to a, to the lower section of the population, which is, which have low, low income. There, there would be other producers who might want to focus on the high income category of the population. So for whom to produce is also a choice that has, that has to be taken so that we can try solving our basic economic problem. So once we start answering these questions, what to produce, how to produce and for whom to produce, we can start solving our basic economic problem. Now, this basic economic problem is not only faced by a consumer or by a producer who's just producing goods and services. This basic economic problem is faced at various economic levels. For example, obviously as consumers, we have to take, make a choice what goods and services we want to we want to consume use given given our limited income we cannot consume everything we want so given our limited income we choose to consume goods a b c and not consume goods x y z as producers also this problem is faced because again a producer may want to produce so many different kinds of goods and services so that they can earn profit by selling these goods and services but Given their limited resources that they own, everything cannot be produced. So a choice has to be made. What type of goods and services the producer is interested in producing and selling. Now workers as workers also choice is available. A worker cannot join multiple jobs or cannot earn multiple streams of income. The worker has to make a choice. Given my skills and talent, this is the best job for me. I would do this and given my time, given my limited availability of time, I would prefer to work here and earn this much income. Government was also faced with the problem of choice and problem of scarcity because given their resources, now they may be having multiple objectives for their, for the economy, for the entire economy. They may want to eradicate poverty. They may want to have a control on population. They might want to maintain a certain rate of inflation. They might want to produce some goods and services in the economy. Everything cannot be achieved. They will have to make a choice given their limited resources. They have to choose to do something and they have to choose not to do something else. So this explains the basic economic problem. So in the next part, we see 
more about choice, more about opportunity cost. Thank you for being with me. If you enjoyed the video, please like it. Please comment your doubts. Please share it with your friends. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.